I recently had some requests to answer the question, is all killing wrong? And they wanted to know about self-defense, and they wanted in particular about what about a Christian being in law enforcement and being in the military? On last week's episode, we answered the question, is all killing wrong? And we recognize that, that murder, the taking of innocent life, is wrong. But there are certain situations in which it is okay for killing to take place. We recognized Exodus chapter 20 in the Old Testament law, the law of Moses, that, that it does say thou shalt not kill, but even God himself directed his people to kill on certain occasions. And so the element that we saw that always had to exist for killing to be justified is that you had to have the authority and also had to be with the purpose of punishing evil. And so we saw self-defense. We saw that the government, Romans chapter 13, could have the right to take life in certain situations. And this would be uh, certainly what sometimes would be war, not all wars, but certain times that if the intention is to punish evil, then wars could be okay. Uh, the death penalty could be okay. And certainly a law enforcement officer, whenever he's out in the carrying out of his duties, if he is being forced in punishing evil and to protect that which is good and innocent people, there could be times he has the authority to, under the government, to take a life. And that wouldn't be wrong in the sight of God, according to God's Word. If you didn't catch last week's episode, I want to encourage you, go back and watch that. And you can find that on our Roku channel, our Apple TV channel, or on YouTube. NWFSBS is how you search for that. NWFSBS, as it shows on screen. And you can find that under last week's episode, entitled is killing always wrong. Today I want to focus more about what about the Christian serving in the military or the Christian serving in law enforcement. I realize that there are many young people especially that are having to make these decisions that are entering into or possibly going to enter into either law enforcement or military and there are some things they need to consider. Is it right? Is it wrong? If it is okay then what restrictions or what are some things I need to consider before making that choice and how do I conduct myself? As I said earlier, this is a question that's come to me. They've asked me to deal with this. So I want to make sure that we answer this with a Bible answer. Now you may be watching this and say, well, this doesn't have to do with me. I'm not going to be in the military. I'm too old for that. I want to encourage you to watch the program anyway because it may be that you have a neighbor, you may have a son, a grandson, daughter, a granddaughter that, that maybe be considering this, and you need to know how to help guide them from God's Word to this, um, a, a biblical answer to this question, can a Christian serve in law enforcement or the military? I want to thank you for joining me, Guy Montgomery, for Have a Bible Question, where we give a Bible answer to your Bible question. I hope you're enjoying the program. I want to tell you about a great opportunity that you can have your Bible questions answered. Every single Tuesday night, I'm joined here in the studio of the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies by Troy Spradlin, Jeff Orr, and Ray Brantley. Together, we answer questions with Bible answers. So join us every Tuesday night at 630 by searching for Have a Bible Question on YouTube, on Facebook Live, as well as our website and a podcast afterwards. As we start this, I actually don't even want to start with the idea of law enforcement and military. What I want to start with is the idea of you and your conscience. That's very important because in this episode, I'm not trying to, to persuade somebody in the sense that if you think it goes against your conscience to serve in the military or law enforcement uh, to try and get you to go do that. I, I never would. Uh, I don't want you to go against that. Romans chapter 14, in fact, is the case that we have here. Because Romans 14, there were those that thought it was wrong to eat of meat that had been offered to idols, and then some people thought it was okay. Paul's conclusion to them at the church at Rome was, is that there was nothing wrong with eating of that meat. But let's look at verse 19. He said, let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things where, wherewith one may edify another. 
For meat destroy not the work of God, all things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offense. It is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Hast thou faith, have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. And he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith it is sin. So if an individual cannot in good faith serve in the military or serve in law enforcement because he is fearful he may have to take a life and to him that would be wrong, then please do not do that. Because if you cannot do it in faith, then it would be a sin. But that doesn't mean we don't study it. Remember, our conscience is shaped by the, by the, the things that we learn and put into our body, our minds, so to speak. Remember, it's in 1 Timothy 4, 2. Paul writes to Timothy about people having their conscience seared. And, and in fact, it was right there in Acts chapter 23, verse 1, whenever he refers back to him persecuting Christians, that he had lived in all good conscience to that day. So as far as the idea of conscience being your guide, remember, we can shape our conscience. And that's why Romans chapter 14 says, doing something of faith. Well, where does faith come from? Well, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, verse 17. So the goal of this is not to try and get people to go against their conscience. If you think it's wrong to do so, then, then certainly don't go serve in the military or law enforcement if you feel fearful of having to take a life. Uh, but make sure that your decision is based upon faith by the Word of God. And that is what this episode is about, to try and help you understand what does God's Word say so that you can then make a good, informed decision. Make sure your decision is based upon faith, which is based upon the Word of God. I love reading and studying my Bible. In fact, I really enjoy studying God's Word with other people, whether it's face-to-face, -face, online, or through Bible correspondence courses. One of the favorite parts of my week is to come in and take a, uh, an envelope where we have sent somebody a, a course already with a postage page envelope They've completed it and they've mailed it back to me. And I then take the course and I grade it and then I write a letter back to them with the next lesson so that they can continue studying God's Word. Would you like to take a Bible correspondence course with me? If so, we want you to call us, write us, or sign up online at your earliest convenience so together you and I can study God's Word some more. So let's get to the simple answer. Can a Christian be in law enforcement or military? Yes. Based upon our study that we had last week, that when there is the authority in order to kill for the purpose of punishing evil or the protection of those that are innocent, then it would be okay for a Christian to take the life if he's serving for the government. Because the government, according to Romans chapter 13, is the ones that are ordained of God. Look at that in chapter 13 and verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. And it actually goes on and it talks about them in verse 4, being a minister of God in the things that they do. Does that mean that everything the government does is right? No. A lot of times governments do things that are wrong. It also doesn't mean that all killing they do is justified. I think a perfect example of that is Germany, when you had Adolf Hitler that was in control. And rather than being a minister to punish evil, uh, he was a minister of evil. And we needed governments that did want to do that which is good to go and deal with them. And they had the authority to go and to punish him based upon the concepts found right here in Romans 13. And so those men and even women that go into our military serving for the government and taking a life have the authority through God or from God through the local government as long as what they're doing is to punish evil, not if they are actually being uh, the oppressor, the aggressor, as sometimes it's referred to, are the one that's doing evil. And that's where we get into a complicated issue because there is a responsibility upon the Christian to make sure that when he carries his orders out that those orders are righteous orders.
because just because the government tells him to do it doesn't necessarily make it approved of God. And so we've got to consider that a little bit of is it necessarily a prudent thing? Is it a wise thing for the Christian to serve in the military? There are men that have written upon this and they have uh, varied uh, their opinions over it over and over again. Some have said that the Christian shouldn't be involved in government at all because of the compromising situation. Some have even said, well, they can be a conscientious objector and stay out of the military. Then others say they can be a non-combatant. I read a book here a while back by a man whose son was a non-combatant and that he served in the military. He chose not to pick up a gun, but he served as a medic instead. In that situation, he felt like he was doing that which is right because he wasn't going to have to literally take the life, but he actually rendered aid to both sides, uh, to those that were on his side plus the enemies wounded, as he would often tend to both. And so this goes back to the, the earlier part that I was talking to you about, choosing how we can do this in good conscience. But there's another principle of Scripture that we need to consider. That yes, a, a child of God can, if it doesn't violate his faith, his conscience, in order to serve in the military, he can, and, and even if it means taking a life. But is it always the prudent choice? Well, that kind of has to do with the idea of being unequally yoked together. And that's what we're going to talk about right after this short break. No matter what else is happening in the world, you will always find good news today. A proud partner of Have a Bible Question. A part of our program every week includes a question that Guyton and Troy answer for our viewers. Good news today can be seen on many of the same television stations that air Have a Bible Question. You can also watch the program on our website, gnttv.org, or on your phone through our apps. We also have a channel on Roku and Apple TV, as well as episodes archived on YouTube. We'd love to have you join us. We've answered the question, can a Christian serve in law enforcement or military? Now I want to give you some things to think about as an individual decides for himself of should he? And there are some factors you ought to consider. One of those factors is about being yoked to somebody that may put you into a compromising situation. Let's start reading 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. It says, We then as workers together with him beseech you that you receive not the grace of God in vain. I want to go down to verse 4 and it says, But in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience and in afflictions and necessities and distresses. And he goes on in verse 6 and says, By pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned. And he talks about this idea of how we as children of God are supposed to be living, working, being ministers of God. And then a warning is given. And we start reading again in verse 14. He says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them, and be you separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Now, this passage doesn't just apply to law enforcement and military. It would apply to any Christian in his uh, relationships, in the agreements, in the uh, even if you want to see it as a form of bondage that you're in to your employer-employee relationship. Is this relationship going to put me in a compromising situation to being a minister to God, to be, be able to carry out the work for which I have been called? We're supposed to be pure. We're supposed to be walking and working for Him. And so will this cause me to not be able to make the right choices? And sometimes, especially whenever it comes to the military, it could put somebody in a compromising situation because they have that say, they have that control over you that you might not be able to make the right choices because of the bondage that you're in with them. That's why it talks about being unequally yoked. 
the nice thing about a normal employer-employee situation, and this happened to me in law enforcement in particular, is that they uh, tried to tell me I couldn't do some things as a, as, as a police officer, and, and it had to do with the, my attendance at worship, uh, some vacation Bible schools, and then one um, training officer I had said, you can't say anything about God or the church while we're in this car together. And I said, if that's be the case, then I, I quit. I'm not going to. This is going to be my notice. Fortunately, I had some supervisors that put that training officer in his place. But I was free to walk away. Unfortunately, in the military, you don't always have that freedom to walk away. And that's something you might want to consider if you're considering, should you put yourself into that position? Does it put you in a compromising position whenever it comes to, can I assemble with Christians? What if they give me an order that is to, to, that wouldn't be punishing evil, but might be compromising to carry out upon those that do good? And that's something that each individual is going to have to make a decision about. Is this relationship going to cause me to be unequally yoked? Now, don't misunderstand. I'm not saying do not go into the military. I'm trying to take a Bible principle and say this is something that everyone should consider before he puts himself in that relationship. That goes to where you work. Take law enforcement out of it. Christians need to be careful. Am I going into partnership with a, a business partner that will put me into a compromising situation? I've seen that whenever it comes to the sale of alcohol with two restaurant owners in which one was a Christian, one was not. One wanted to make the money off alcohol. The other one uh, said, no, I'm not going to do that. And it, it caused a, a friction to be there. And so are there situations that we as Christians don't put ourselves yoked together because of the, the compromising situations in which it creates? Then that's the case. And every Christian should, should consider that before they enter in to an occupation like law enforcement or military. Stay tuned. Have some closing remarks in a moment. Since 1987, the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies has been providing college-level Bible classes tuition free. In fact, I myself am a graduate of the school. I'm excited to announce that we are now 100% online, offering you the opportunity to utilize these courses to help you grow in your relationship with God. You can learn more so that you can prepare yourself for the next semester at nwfsbs.com. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. Before we close, I really want to think about a couple more things that kind of come to my mind from God's Word regarding this. When it comes to a compromising situation, we actually have an account of that in the Bible in Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas had been preaching and they upset the people and so they, the people made accusations. The government actually laid hands on them and, and beat them and cast them into prison there in Philippi. Now, they shouldn't have done that because of Paul's Roman citizenship. But they did, and so as you read from verse 20 and following, you actually see that Paul and Silas were singing at midnight in prison, and there was a great earthquake that opened the, the jail, that they were no longer to be bound. The Philippian jailer woke, and uh, he thought that he was going to be killed and tormented because the prisoners escaped, and so he's getting ready to take his life when, when Paul cries out that he doesn't need to do any harm. Now, it's interesting in verse um, 29, it says, Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. And when it was day, the magistrate sent the sergeant, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prisoner, prison told this, saying to Paul, The magistrates have sent you to let you go. Now, therefore, depart and go in peace. Now, this is the part I want us to focus on, is that you notice his repentance was washing their stripes. The situation that he was in had him putting stripes upon men that were innocent. 
this is a wrong thing to do. It was compromising because he was following orders, but he was doing that which is wrong. And so part of his repentance was he was washing their stripes, trying to make them better the best way that he possibly could. And I wonder sometimes in law enforcement and military if we can put ourselves into positions that we could be like that Philippian jailer. Now, it is important to point out that he continued as the keeper of the prisoner in prison, at least for the next day. You don't have anything telling him to leave the service of the military because that's who would have been keeping the prison. In fact, let's go over to Luke chapter 3 real quick. In Luke chapter 3, it says, and this is them coming to John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. It says in verse 12, Then came also publicans to be baptized and said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exact no more than that which is appointed unto you. And the soldiers, verse 14, likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely, and be content with your wages. So notice the repentance isn't the idea of to leave the military. It wasn't wrong that they were in the military, but he's talking about be accountable for your actions while you're in the military. And that's what's important, is that we need to make sure that if we decide to go into the military law enforcement, that we make sure our actions are that of a Christian. I have more comments about that in just a moment. Hi, I'm Guyton Montgomery, one of the preachers here at the Church of Christ at Milestone. Paul admonished Timothy to exercise himself unto godliness. We try and do this at our congregation through fellowship, prayer, worship, and of course, Bible study. We would like for you to take advantage of the things that we offer. You can learn more at cocmilestone.com or have a biblequestion.com or go to nwfsbs.org. Better yet, come visit us in person where you'll receive a warm, loving welcome. Before we close, let me make a couple more quick, quick points that I believe are very important. It can be a righteous thing to serve in military, to serve in government, to serve in law enforcement. In fact, I believe and pray and hope that, that we need more Christians in that capacity. Reason being is, as a law enforcement officer and as a Christian, I tried to always treat the people that I was dealing with, whether it was a victim or whether it was one that was guilty of what they've done, I always tried to treat them the way I wanted to be treated. Why? Because my policy said to? Because that's what I was trained to do? No, because that's what God's Word says to do. Treat others the way you want to be treated. I made sure I always treated them with love because I've been called to love my fellow man. I made sure that I always tried to respect the authority of the law and not to go beyond it. Why? Because I, as a Christian, respect authority. I respect this concept that I'm not supposed to go and exert my own will upon other people. See, that's what Christians do. Christians strive to be peacemakers, Matthew chapter 5. But Christians also realize that when you have to choose and are forced about punishing that which is evil or to protect people that are good, you're willing to make the difficult decisions. I personally pray for our, our leaders. We've had an episode in the past about that, about the relationship of the Christian and the government. And we've been called to pray for them. And I also pray that we'll have more Christians serving in these capacities. And, and I want to say that I am so thankful. Many of you watching this served in the military. You've served in law enforcement. I am so, so much, I am very thankful for you and the sacrifices that you've made. I think sometimes we don't realize what we ask of them and the burdens that they bear because of the things that they've seen, the things that they've been called to do. But they've done so in the name of being a minister of God according to Romans chapter 13 and verse 4. I pray that this episode has helped you to understand that you can, We've answered that question and can help you decide and answer for yourself the question of should you as a Christian be in the military. I want to thank you for watching Have a Bible Question, the work of the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies. 
We've been in existence since 1987 and overseen by the eldership of the Church of Christ at Milestone, where I serve as one of the preachers along with Ray Brantley. The work, though, is not only just provided by the Church of Christ at Milestone, but it's actually supported by many congregations of the Church of Christ and individual Christians that care about you and want you to know more about God's Word. I want to encourage you to find the Church of Christ in your area and go visit them and learn more about God, about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit, and how they want you to be saved and all that they have done so that you can have eternal life. Tis the sweet and glorious thought that comes to me. I'll live on, I'll live on yes, I'll live on. Jesus saved my soul from death and now I'm free. I'll live on, I'll live on yes, I'll live on. I'll live on and on, yes, I'll live on and on. Through eternity I'll live on and on. I'll live on and on, yes, I'll live on and on. i 